Hello everybody. Um, today I'm here to show you how to make this beautiful plant journal. So as soon as I saw the March 2021 Club La La Land Crafts kit, I knew that I wanted to make a planting journal. I've been really into making journals lately and I just thought it would be a really fantastic place to document your plants. Like if you're anything like me, I forget when the last time is that I watered them. So you could just write each of them in there and then when you're watering them, um, all kinds of stuff. Um, and I know plants even inspire people. So you could write your inspirations in there, all kinds of different things. So I wanted to create the beautiful um, journal with the club kit for March. Uh, so this is it right here. I absolutely love the design of it. It has this really cool open spine so it does not have um the spine doesn't go the full way i just think that looks really cool um on the back here and throughout the entire book i've used the sparkle and shine paper pad from la la land crafts um it's absolutely gorgeous uh this i believe is all I have left from the paper pack because I really love this paper and I put it all over in here. So that's what I used for the paper. Um, these are the club dies, the dies that you get with the club kit. So there's this really cool plant stand um, and then there's all of these little, there's a plant here, there's another pot, there's plants, there's like the hanging one that's like this one there. Um, so all kinds of really cool little elements. There's a watering can, your pots, your cactus, all kinds of really cool stuff. So what I did with these is I cut them all once in black, all once in green, and once all once in like the craft colored cardstock. And then that's all I used throughout the book. I just kind of put them in in different ways um and you'll see that as i show you the book but super super simple i didn't even cut them apart i ran them all through once um black green and um craft and then i just kind of put them together in different ways so those are the dies and then the stamps that you get is this adorable little marcy here holding her plant and then there's a little mouse stamp set which is a separate set and um, i have more of them in the book to show you guys this adorable sentiment, the plant mama, that's from the club kit as well. And then back here, this large tag that I used is from the large tags and everything that I use is gonna be linked below, okay? And then there's also this really beautiful little banner, or sorry, large, the part of the large flags set, it's stitched. It has a lot of different sizes that comes with it, but I love this size for sentiments. Um, and then I've just closed it up with some seam binding here. So let's open the book up, the journal, sorry. So that is what it looks like when it's all open. I'm just gonna move my dies aside here a bit. Um, so on the inside front here, you do have a nice pocket. So you can put anything in there that you'd like. You can put some tags, um, little memorabilia if you go to a plant uh, shop or something like that. Um, you can put that in there. So there's a nice pocket in there. You can put your stuff in there. And then here at the first page, I kept it pretty simple. I just used the banner die again and the You Grow Girl sentiment. And that is also from the club kit. And then I used a black plant. So that is this one here. And then I used the green one as well. Um, just different ways to use it. And then in the tutorial, I also show you how to use your six by six papers to cover, um, to cover larger spaces. So there are four signatures in this book. They are all sewn in. And again, in the tutorial, I show you how to sew those all in. Um, I show you how to match your little pocket layers. And so as you can see here, they are sewn into the book. Um, and then there's another, there's the back of the first signature. And then some of those beautiful papers put together again here. And then on this page here, I used a different one of the tags dies. I used this one right here. 
and I just cut it twice and I just cut the top off the white one and layered it onto the black one and then I put a little bit of a scrap piece of the pattern paper on there and then I used a little one of the pots and see here I used the green pot with the craft cactus so it's more of a a decorative element than you know having to be a green cactus and then I used the don't stop believing which is also from the kit and then I popped up the little mouse here that I colored up with my Copics all the images are colored with Copic markers and then for the sentiments, most of them in the book, I used one of these, um, one of the stitched rectangles. And again, these will be linked below. So super, super cute and simple. And again, in here, I just layered the papers onto those pockets. And then again, that is just another sewn in signature. And then the beautiful papers, these papers just speak for themselves. Um, and then here's another little mouse and I used the Polaroid die here. So this cute little die I used right here, it still has white paper in it. Um, I used that right here for this. And then I used a green pot with a craft colored plant there. And then the it's not hoarding if it's plants. Another sentiment from the kit and then the cute little mousey there. And then again, the layered paper in here. And then again on the back here. And then on the last signature, there's the little mouse with the watering can. And it says, sometimes I wet my plants. That is absolutely adorable. And then I use the black pot with the craft colored plant. And then this, these are the hexagon dies. And I used a larger one. So the largest one, and then I used the second largest one, and they are double stitched. Um, I didn't take advantage of this in here, but they are double stitched, super, super cute. And then again, there is the layered paper in here and here. And then on the back here, I used the same paper, the same two papers, and I did cover it with black, a black strip, but honestly, they line up so perfectly. I just cut them at the same time that it didn't even show that it was separate papers. So that's an option as well. And then there's another pocket back here. Again, you can put tags or what have you. You can put photos of your plants. That would be interesting as they grow. So you could have smaller, you know, bigger and smaller as they get bigger and smaller. Um, and then there's is the back. So that is the plant journal. Um, the tutorial will be following right after we're done here. And I hope you enjoy making it. And if you do, um, I will also link the La La Land Craft Facebook group, um, the club group below, so you can post your finished journals there. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, guys, so let's go ahead and make the cover for our little journal. So you're going to need two pieces of your medium weight chipboard that measures six and a quarter by six and a quarter. So you're going to need two and you're going to need one that measures two and a half by six and a quarter. Okay. And then to wrap those, you're going to need some lightweight cardstock. This is 65 pound. You're going to need two that measure eight and a half by eight and a half and two that measure or sorry, one that measures eight and a half by five and a half, I believe. Let me check. Yes, eight and a half by five and a half, okay? So first we are going to do wrap our spine, okay? So the spine is gonna be a little bit different because we're assembling this book a little bit differently. So the first thing we need to do is glue this into the center of our white piece of paper. So our two and a half by six and a quarter piece of medium weight chipboard. It's gonna go right in the center here, just like this. And you want more space on the sides just because of how we're assembling this. This is just kind of a, a different way to put together an album that I have seen recently going around. And I like it. It's not necessarily better, it's just different. 
So now we need to fold up all of our pieces around that chipboard. So bring up all the paper around the chipboard. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our glue and in this section here, this long rectangle here that's been created by the folding, we are going to add the glue, okay? So right along here, sorry, I have to let my puppy in. She's scratching at the door. So in this entire section here, you're gonna add your glue, okay? And then even try to get a little bit more kind of in that cross piece there. And then we're gonna fold it over. And then grab your bone folder and really get these folded down nicely. Down in here, really get that crease nice and tight right there. Just like this. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So now that you have that done, we can go ahead and fold these over just like so. And this one. And then we can miter. So you're gonna get your scissors. Mine are all full of pieces of tape, but that's okay. So I'm gonna cut from here down to this edge here. So from this corner down to where our folded over piece is there. So pretty much angle it just like that. So that's what we have all the way around. And then on this one, I'm just gonna cut up from this side. It's the exact same concept. It's just from a different angle. And then again, just down to there and just like so. Okay, so that's what your little spine piece is gonna look like. And that's what's gonna connect it all together. So now we're gonna wrap this piece. So remember this is our six and a quarter by six and a quarter black, well, it can be any color, but medium weight chipboard. And we are just going to, I'm using my Fabri-Tac here for this. Um, you guys know that I like Fabri-Tac when I'm attaching chipboard to lightweight chip or lightweight cardstock because it doesn't show through to the other side. There's no bubbling, there's no marks. Um, I just love it just because of that. All right, so you're gonna do the same thing to your other piece of black chipboard. Just glue it right into the center of your white. And the white was eight and a half by eight and a half. And let's fold first here. So in this case, we are going to fold in all four sides and glue all four sides just like so and then you can take and burnish just like that all right and now we're going to cut out these corners that we've created so what I'm going to do is instead of just cutting across, cause that's a little risque in this case, I am going to make an angle cut right to about there. So it's just beyond the chipboard and then kind of try to match that angle on that side so that this is about what you have left. Okay, just a tiny, tiny bit, like a 32nd of an inch. Okay, and I'm gonna do that on all four sides. All right, so now we're going to bring in all four of these sides. And for this step, you can either use glue or tape. I'm gonna use glue just cause it's a little bit faster. So I'm attaching all of the glue on my little flap here and I'm going right along the bottom here as well. And I'll show you why in just a sec. And the reason why we put the glue in here is cause it kind of wets the paper a little bit and then makes it so we can get it to look really nice and square. All right, so now I'm just gonna glue down my other four flaps. I'm 
So we've put all three of our pieces with the cardstock covering it. So now what we need to do on our little hinge piece on the outside here, so these two flaps, we need to put some score tape. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna go past where you need to be here along the spine. So about a 16th of an inch away from this folding line, you're gonna start your tape and you're actually gonna go past the edge and then we'll just cut off the excess because we want it to go all the way across. So you can just continue down exactly like that. So you just go a tiny bit over, not a lot, just like so. And then just take your scissors. I'm going to use my non-stick ones for this and just cut off that excess tape. Just like so, and then we're gonna do that on the other side as well. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get our spine attached to either side of our album here. So how I like to do it is I just bend this back like this. There's many methods, this is how I like to do mine. And I just take off the first piece of my score tape or the backing. And then I take one of my side pieces and I'm just going to lay it right on top of there and I'm going to make sure to line it up so just like this and you can press that down and then just open it and lay it down and then just kind of reach in there and get those other two strips of backing off. I just don't take all three off initially because I don't want to have to remove three if I don't get it on straight. So that is one side attached, so it should look just like this. And I'm gonna do the other one the exact same way. I'm gonna bend it down. I'm gonna remove one strip of my backing. And then I'm gonna grab my other side and just line it up again. All right, and then just open it up and press that on really nicely, just like so. And then that is our little album cover. So just kind of a different way to do it. Um, like I said, there's no right or wrong in the different methods. This is just different. So next to cover our spine section here, I have a piece that measures five and a half wide by six inches tall, and I've covered the entire back of it with score tape. If you have score tape sheets, you can use those. Alternatively, you can also use um, glue. I just like to use score tape because um, I just like the immediate adherence and not getting any bubbles part of score tape. So I'm just removing all my backings here, just with my little tool. This is just the little Cricut pick tool that you get for weeding your vinyl. So just get all those backings off. The nine million pieces I have on here. Kind of satisfying when you take them all out. <laughs> all right, and I'm gonna throw those in the garbage. And then this is gonna go right on top of here, and we're gonna try to make sure to line it up top and bottom and left to right. You should have about an inch and a half on both sides of your spine, and it should be about an eighth of an inch from the top and the bottom. So just lay it down like that about like this then you're going to take your score tool and burnish the daylights out of it burnish 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 through that spine area through this top area here and then you can take your score tool and get into those creases with the side of it not the 
tip and bend it up a bit and it's just as you go and then you'll do this side as well and then that make sure you got all your bubbles out and then just bend it in all right perfect Okay, so let's work on the signatures. So you're going to need four signatures. So I'm going to show you how to make one and then you're gonna get the other three made. So you're gonna need a piece of your cardstock. This is 12 by 12 white cardstock and it is the lightweight, 65 pounds. And that is what I would recommend using for this or you could use like an actual sheet of 12 by 12 pattern paper. That would be fine too. But for this particular book, since we're working with six by six paper, um, we're gonna use just white cardstock. So the white cardstock that we have here measures 11 and a half by 12. So on the 12 inch side into your scoreboard, so this is your 12 inch side, you're gonna put it in your scoreboard and you're gonna score at eight and three quarters, right down here, okay, eight and three quarters. And then I don't actually score in the middle just because sometimes these papers are off a little bit on the sizing. So I just fold it in half on the 11 and a half inch side. I just fold it in half myself and burnish it nicely, okay? So now what you're gonna do is this part is gonna come up here like this, the bottom, and you're gonna measure from this center score line here. You're gonna get your ruler and you're gonna measure I'm gonna grab my ruler to show you. So I just like to center it on any any inch mark. So this is a three inch. Doesn't have to be on the three inch though, just any that you can see an inch from either side. And then I just mark an inch from the center and an inch from the center on both sides, just like this, okay? Then what you're gonna do is take a ruler and a scissor or, or a ruler and a scissor and a pencil. You could also do this with a craft knife. For the sake of the video, I'm gonna show it to you with a scissor. So you're gonna take your ruler and you're gonna line it up with this tick mark here. And you're gonna line it up with the bottom of your score line on this side, just like this. So line them up. And then you are just going to Draw a line down, just like this. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Line it up with that mark here. And then with your bottom here. And draw a line, just like this, okay? Then take your scissor. And I try to cut on the outside of my pencil mark so I don't have to erase it. So just right on the outside of it. And it's fine if you don't get it right there because you can just, um, you can erase it after. I'm just thinking ahead. And then this side. Pointier scissors are not a bad thing here either, but this is just what I had to my side. And then you just take that out and then you have your little um, you have your little V cut out, okay? So if you do get pencil anywhere, like I did here for some reason, you can erase it. And if you did get any, if you left any, you can go ahead and erase that too, okay? So that is your, the cover of your signature. Your, okay, now for your pages, there's so many things you can do here. Um, you could tea dye your papers, you could add all kinds of other papers to it. Um, but I like to kind of leave mine plain so that if I'm decorating the journal myself, I can give it my own life to it. Um, but if I'm giving it away, people can do their own things. They might not like everything I like, right? So I like to leave mine pretty plain. So for the signatures, you're gonna need eight pieces of copy paper. And I like to take four and fold four at a time. 
Okay, you can fold all eight. I like to do four. So just kind of stack them. So this is just eight and a half by 11 copy paper. And just kind of line up your edges down here and fold it over. Just You're just folding them in half, that's all. Then take your other four, stack them nicely and fold those in half and then you take them and put them inside your other ones that we just folded and just get them to all stack nicely together and then you get your cover of your signature back and that is going to go right inside here okay for these little pockets here inside you're going to grab your glue or you can use a piece of eighth inch score tape um, that's totally up to you depending on how big you want your pocket to be you can use even larger score tape and i'm just going to add a little bit of glue right right along that edge right there just like this okay and then fold it over and press it down it's okay if some comes out just wipe it off press it down on this side just give it a second to really take And then same thing on the other side, just a tiny little line of glue and then bring it over. And like I said, you can use tape, tape runner, whatever you'd like and give that a good press. And then you're going to need to do this three times and then we will sew them into the journal. For the piece that we're going to sew all of our signatures into. I'm not going to be sewing directly into the journal because I don't want to see this on the outside. I want my outside to be nice and clean. So we're going to sew into a separate piece and then attach that into the book. So this piece measures two and a half inches wide by six and a quarter long. So the first thing you're going to want to do is find your center mark on the six and th a quarter side okay so mine is three and an eighth because it's six and a quarter so three and an eighth is half of this all right then what you're going to do is from the top down you're going to make a mark at one and from the bottom up you're going to make a mark at five and a quarter so you're going to have one three and an eighth and five and a quarter then just line it up on the on that mark that mark that you've made so this one right here is the one that it was and then just draw a line across a line across and a line across so you have all your your inch your three and an eighth and your five and a quarter marked all the way across then what you need to do is take it on your two and a half inch side and you're going to make a mark at half an inch one one and a half and two just like this. So half, one, one and a half, and two. Then you're gonna flip it over. So we're on the bottom now. And you're gonna make a mark at half inch, one, one and a half, and two. All right, and you're gonna make all of those lines. So you're gonna connect them again. You're going to line the bottom tick mark up with the top tick mark and make a line. And the same thing going all the way across. So you have your half inch line, your one inch line, your one and a half inch line, and your two inch line going all the way down, okay? Then what you're gonna do is take something you can poke into. So like a stack of books or a, not a stack of books, but like a magazine or something like that that you can poke into. I have just a little foam piece that came with my stamp blocks. Um, and then all you're gonna do is you're gonna take a pokey tool. I have it all here. This came with like a leather sewing kit that I got off of Amazon. You can use any pokey tool though. You can use like this one that we were using earlier to take the tape off. Um, your Tim Holtz uh, pokey tool, anything works. But I have this one. And then every place that your lines intersect, you're gonna poke a hole, okay? So every single place that your lines intersect, you would poke a hole. So you will end up with 
12 holes on this piece, okay, for our four signatures, just like that, okay? Okay, so now for your signature, how you're going to find your where to mark on there is we know this is eight and three quarters tall right here, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to mark at four and three eighths, which is half of our eight and three quarters. You're going to find your four and three eighths on your ruler and you're going to make a mark at four and three eighths and four and three eighths is, so you've got four inches here, then you've got four and an eighth, four and a quarter, and then you've got your four and three eighths mark. Okay. Then to make our sure that our holes align perfectly you're going to take your piece that is to sew into and you're going to line it up you're going to line the center mark up with your four and three eighths mark just like this okay and then you're going to mark your other two lines it's that simple okay and that way you're going to know your mark is exactly where it needs to be all right, and so what I've done here is I've just taken two clips just to make sure that my paper stays where it should be, just like this. So basically, I've just made sure that it's centered where I want it. And then I'm gonna take my awl, and even if my mark that I made is not right in, this, right in my spine line here, I'm still just going to go right where that is and put my all right in line with it, just like this. And then I'm gonna close it up and I'm just gonna poke through until I'm through to the other side, just like this, okay? And you're gonna do the same thing with the other two. Just close it up and you can move it or wiggle it if you want until you're through to the other side. And you don't have to go all the way through with this, just like a, quarter of an inch through and the same thing up here with this one just wiggle it kind of just till you're through just like this so that has poked our holes all the way through all right so now that you've got your piece that we're going to sew into completed and your signatures what we're going to do is we're going to sew our signature into this piece. So we're going to start with this back one here. So I've got one of my signatures here and I've left the clips on. You can take yours off if it's easier. And I have a needle here. So this one is, it also came in the same kit as I got my all in and it's like a leather, like a furniture sewing needle. So it's just a little bit thicker than regular. Um, it has a pointy edge or a pointy tip, but not too terribly pointy. And I'm just using embroidery thread. Uh, so this I got from Walmart in this big roll. Um, it's in like the embroidery section. Uh, so you can use Baker's twine even if you wanted to, just nothing too thick, okay? So what you're gonna do first is you're going to take and you're going to make sure that these little pockets we created are at the bottom okay make sure that you're not getting sewing it in upside down you're going to take your needle and you're going to go through your center hole first okay and then just bring it all the way through and just leave yourself a little tail like about this much or less but you just need to leave yourself a little tail there Okay, I'll leave about that much. Okay, and then you're gonna take your little sewing piece and you're gonna put it through the center hole of the last the last line here. Okay, and you're gonna bring it all the way through, just like this. So now we're at this step. Now you're gonna take your needle and go through the top hole back here. And at the same time, you can put your needle through the top hole of your signature.
just like this, okay? And bring it through, bring it this string all the way through. Make sure it's tight. Just like this. So now you should be at, at this point, okay? Now you're gonna take your needle and go through the bottom hole here. So the bottom of your, I'm gonna try to go slow so we don't get confused. We're gonna go through the bottom hole here and then out and through the bottom hole of your sewing piece. We're all, so we're staying on the same line and bring it through. So that is tight in here. So you should have a line going down here and then still your little string hanging out. Then we're gonna go through the center hole again and through the center hole of the signature. So back through the center hole of our, the piece we're sewing into and back through the center hole of our signature. Just find your hole and come back through there. Sometimes I just take my papers apart so I can see a little bit better and back through there, okay? And you're gonna to wanna to pull it through. So now, pull it through so it's nice and tight. And then you can cut this off here. All right, so once you've got both of your little strings here, you're gonna take one of your strings and put it on one side of this center line and then the other one on, one, on this side of the center line and you're just gonna tie a knot. Just like this, tie a nice tight knot and make sure that your strings back here, these pieces are nice and tight, not loose. So give it a good pull and then do a double knot. Just like so. And then you can cut it off wherever you want. You can leave it hanging if you like that look. I'm gonna cut it off like right at the knot because I don't want any hanging pieces on mine, just like this. And then your signature is sewn into our little backer piece. So you're gonna wanna continue and do that with your other three signatures. Okay, so I have got all of our pretty little signatures stitched in. So this is how the back of yours should look. I'm gonna mention really quickly, before you start stitching yours in, it's probably you're better off to use the other side than what we marked, unless you erase all your lines first. I forgot to erase mine, it's completely fine. I can go through and erase those after, I'm not even a little bit worried about that, but you can either erase yours before you start stitching, or just use the other side and both is going to work perfectly. So this is how your little back should look. That's them all stitched in. So what I've done with my book here is I have put the perimeter all around the spine. So this is the inside of our book and all around the spine, I have put some score tape. We're going to attach it into, we're going to attach our signatures in with Fabri-Tac because we have that, um, we have the embroidery thread that we used. So what I'm going to do before I start, I'm just going to take one of these big alligator clips and just clip all of them closed just like this, just to make them easier to work with when we're putting them in. So the first thing we're going to do is just remove the backings here of our tape. My little pokey tool is somewhere else, so I am using my fingers just to remove that backing. And I put it pretty much all the way to the edge of our, like our bending, where it bends here, but not all the way, all the way, okay? 
And then I've got my Faber-Tac glue here. I buy mine at Michael's and I use the 30% off coupon for it. Uh, it's still an expensive glue, but I just, I love it. So I'm gonna put some right over top of our thread first, just like so. And then everywhere else like in between. We don't have to go crazy close to the edges because I don't want it to squeeze out and we do have tape there already. Okay, just all over that string. All right, and then we're gonna go right on top of this. It's gonna fit pretty much exactly into the space of our spine. Just line it up and we've got that glue on there so we should be able to move it around a little bit even though we have the tape as well. As you're putting it in, you can also just lift it up to make sure that it's, you're not going over any of your lines. And then you can press it down just like this. And having a clip like this really does help with aligning it so that you're not having to look under both sides and then you can open it up and go in between your signatures and press and just give it a good i'm just using my fingers here sometimes they are my best tools you can use a bone folder or something like that but this is working for me right now all right, so that is that all attached in. Looking super cute, and I just love how that looks back here. Absolutely gorgeous. So now we're gonna add some pockets to the front and back inside covers. Okay, so for the pocket that's gonna go on the inside front and back covers, you're gonna need a piece that measures three inches tall by seven and a quarter wide. And then on the seven and a quarter side, you're gonna score it half an inch and flip it and score it again at half an inch. And on the three inch side, you're gonna also score it half an inch. So half inch, half inch, and half inch. Then we're gonna take our scissors and we're gonna cut right across here, right where basically we're just cutting that square off that we created by scoring, just like so. Okay, now we're gonna take our bone folder and just get our creases really nice and tight. Just like this. So just fold them over, get them nice and tight. like that and now we're just going to attach this pocket to the bottom here and we're going to go all the way to the outside edge okay so I'm going to just do glue on my bottom flap first so just on this flap and then we'll get it all aligned and then I'll put glue on the other two flaps as well so just all over that bottom flap and then we're gonna get it right in here and all the way to the outer corner. Just like so. And all the way to the bottom. So you want space on this side here, but none on the side up here. Give it a good press down and then we'll just bring this back and we'll put our glue on these flaps as well. Just like this. All right, and then you bring this up and then we can take our bone folder and just burnish that all down nicely. All right, and then for this project, 
We are using the La La Land Crafts Sparkle and Shine uh, 6x6 paper pack. It is absolutely gorgeous. As you can see, I've already started decorating, um, but it's really, really beautiful. And so I'm going to show you guys over here how you can use it, even though we have an eight and three quarter tall signature here. I'm going to show you how I kind of made that work throughout. So these papers are absolutely gorgeous. I think I pretty much killed the pack at this point. Um, so what you do is you're going to take one of your six by six pieces and cut it down to five and a half. And we're going to put it on here on the top or the bottom. You can choose where you want to put it. And I'm going to use my ATG gun for this. So just get it really nice and close to your edges. Um, this would be okay to do before you put your signatures in too. Um, it would totally work, but I was actually waiting for my paper to arrive. So I went ahead and did the construction first, but you could totally do that first. So just center it into the top three sides here. Get it nice and centered in there. And then give it a good press down, just like this. And then you're gonna take another piece. So this piece measures six inches by five and a half, okay? So you're gonna take another piece that measures five and a half by two and a half. And again, we're just gonna get our little ATG gun. You can use glue, you can use tape, you can use whatever you'd like. I've recently rediscovered my ATG gun and I'm enjoying using it. So this is just going to go right butted up against this piece here. As straight as you can. Okay, then as you can see, it gives that nice, beautiful look there. Um, even though we've got two separate pieces of paper, you can do the same piece. And I did do that. Let me see. I think it was here. And they actually line up beautifully, but I still like the black strip just because I had done that throughout. So I'm leaving that. So this is going to go right here. So this is a little strip that's a quarter inch wide by five and a half long. You could definitely do longer than that or sorry, wider than that if you wanted to. I'm keeping mine at the, I'm keeping mine at the five and a half. Um, sorry, some people were asking me about this little um, glue bottle. It is called the Fine Line glue bottle, and um, I like it. I'm enjoying using it. The only thing is, is it does get clogged easily, even when I'm, you know, making sure to put the lid back on in between. Sometimes it still clogs, but it's, I would still recommend it because it's still nice to get that tiny bit of glue. All right, so I'm just putting that right across. I'm just putting that right across where our papers meet. Um, I just think it looks really nice and finished. And I like that I can use the six by six papers on a larger book. Okay, so to cover these little inside sections right here, so, these ones you're going to need a piece that measures three inches by five and a half and what you're going to do is you're just going to lay it right on top of your little pocket here so lay it right on top and make sure that on these three sides here you're leaving your little space your little layering space and then you're going to and then you're going to grab a pencil or a pen and you're going to mark in from this edge here, you're going to mark in about an eighth of an inch. Okay. Cause you've already got your eighth of an inch space over here, just like this. Okay. So there's our mark. So now we are going to take our cutter and you can also just use a craft knife for this if you want with a metal ruler. And what we're going to do is align it so that it cuts from this corner up to that line, okay? 
So put it in the cutter and cut. So you're just cutting off that angle, right? So we're gonna glue that on. So just use your glue or tape or whatever you'd like. And then just glue it right into that section. And then that's gonna give you your nice little layer all the way around on these pieces in here. And then for this side, you would do the same thing. So just close it up and mark it on this side here. And that's what I did throughout the book for all my little layers. So for the cover, what you're gonna need is um, a six by six piece of, of paper because our cover is six and a quarter by six and a quarter. So I just left the paper whole and I'm gonna just, I've already kind of put together my cover here. So I used this sweet little stamp from the club kit and then the little mouse is from the club kit and this beautiful plant stand is as well. And these are the sparkle and shine papers and I've just kind of distressed them. And then I put the large tag die behind there. So this is all gonna get glued to the cover. And then I'm gonna show you guys the closure for this journal. And then you're gonna be, you're gonna be ready to go to make your own. So this is gonna go right on the front like this. Super, super cute. And I'm just gonna open it and press from the back. Just like so. Okay, now I need to put a piece of paper in here before we can do our closure. So I'm just gonna see what I have on hand here. Okay, this works. So I'm gonna put this right in the back here. And this measures, I believe, it's four inches by six because I haven't cut it down. Just trying to think, I think I'll use this side. So I'm just gonna grab my glue and we're just gonna glue it in there. And then you guys, I'll give you the rundown on all the products and all that fun stuff when I do the walkthrough. So that's gonna go right here. All right, and then for the closure, you're gonna need your crocodile. So I've got mine right here. And what I'm gonna do is right in the center of this little black piece that I put on, I'm gonna make a hole and I'm gonna use the bigger, the bigger side of the crocodile. I'm just gonna make my hole right there, just like that. And then I've got my little eyelets here and I think I'm going to use silver or should we use white? I think I'll use silver. I always like the way silver looks. So I'm going to put that in there and I'm going to set it up here with the little eyelet setter. So just press it down and that just kind of gives it a really nice finished look. And then we're going to do the same thing on the back, make our hole. So I'm just trying to see about where I did it. Doesn't have to be exact. So about there. Cute, all right, and now I'm going to put an eyelet in there as well. I just got this back, I had lost it 
Well, not this one. I had one taken away from me going through um, security once when I didn't have any carry-on baggage. Um, so now I'm going to get some seam binding. And you can use any color seam binding that you want. You can use a different ribbon. I'm going to use this one because it kind of matches her pants and some of the kind of gold tones in the book. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this through here, through my hole here. And then once I have it through, I'm just gonna do a double knot, just right. I'm gonna try to put one knot on top of the other knot just so that it stays in, just like that. And then I'm gonna leave myself enough that I can tie a nice bow. And I'm gonna do the same thing at the back here. Once you have both of your, your ribbons through, I'm gonna make a little bow. Just like so. I might end up changing this ribbon to just white, but if I do, you guys will see that in the walkthrough. All right, and that is our adorable little plant journal. I absolutely love it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple more finishing touches on this and then you guys will actually see the finished project at the beginning of this video, okay? So I will see you then.